I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to worship here at Christ United Methodist Church on this, this Sunday morning, the second Sunday of the year, what we call Epiphany Sunday, or um, in, in some churches they call it Three Kings Sunday, where, where uh, the idea of the, the wise men coming to to meet the baby Jesus and shown by a stalk. They have these aha moments, or as we think of like, I had an epiphany, I get it, the light bulb went off. Uh, and today our story is looking at Jesus' baptism, which is also an epiphany. That, that Jesus comes and there's this covenant that's, that's brought when this dove comes down and, and this dove, the Holy Spirit, is, gives a covenant with Jesus, and therefore a covenant with you and me. So today on this Epiphany Sunday, we come to remember. Remember the waters, the waters of the Holy Spirit that flow over us, the waters of baptism, that, and commitments that we make today as we remember. So would you, would you open uh, with a word of prayer with me this morning? Let's pray. Most holy God, we gather to give you thanks and praise today. Another Sunday. So wake us up. Clean us up. Wash us of all that stuff. Get rid of all that dirt and grime. And cleanse us. Renew us once again. For it's your water that, that nurtures it's your water that gives us what we need. God, it's also your water that plants and grows. So we pray that through the waters of baptism this morning, that as we go out into the world and plant your seeds of love, your seeds of grace, your seeds of forgiveness, your seeds of service in our families, in our community, and in our world, May you water, may you nurture, and grow your love to the whole kingdom, the whole world knows that Jesus is Lord, and that we are your friend today and every day. So meet us here in this place, turn us around again, and show us your face. In the name of Jesus, that we pray together the prayer that he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us from thy mind, power, and the glory of earth. Amen. As we gather this morning, we also share in how God is working in our lives and how God is working in the world. If you're joining us online this morning, let us know that, that you're with us. You're involved in this too. How is God working in your life? Go ahead and leave a comment or send us a message. Let us, let us know your joys or how we can pray for you this morning. Invite anyone to share. Anyone who would like to share this morning, how have you seen God's love working in your world, working in your life this week? You wouldn't like to share it today? Yes, Mrs. Wesley. Uh, with me, the thing is that I'm having a lot of plumbing problems. And the toilet has been down for a while. So I think it was Saturday, not Saturday, Friday. We finally got it fixed. That's how it was working in my life. I got problems. That's great. Anyone else like to share today? 
somebody who I don't know paid my cable bill for me a hundred dollars. I don't know. I have no idea who did it. But they did it. And that's a testimony to a blessing that comes from God and God only. I don't know if it was a mistake or what, but I tried to clear it up. But there was a little turn it up and said, pay the full, so I just left it. Yep. Right, right. Anyone else like this? Anyone else like this? Yeah. Let's take a moment together and let's just run through a brief, some brief announcements what's going on in the life of our church this morning. You can join the prayer line every day at 5.30 in the morning. Uh, on the screen, you can see how you can dial into that, get your morning started off great. Uh, if you're coming from online, we want to we wanna invite you to church. And if you need a ride to church on Sunday mornings, you can find the information right there. We have a van that will pick you up. Just call the church office and, and let us know by Thursday so we can pick you up Sunday morning. On Wednesdays, we have our upper room Bible study, which is a great uh, time of prayer together and using uh, the Upper Room devotional book that we use throughout the week. Wednesday, we have a long discussion and we can find um, information they need at 11 o'clock on Wednesdays. And again, there's our dialing code. If you haven't gotten our information, uh, or if you've moved or changed the phone number, please make sure you get some information to the church office. And again, those of us who we're connecting with online that, uh, that we'd like to be able to send you things. Uh, so if you if you get us your um, your information, we'll follow up with uh, with these letters and get you on our mailing list. And this morning, although we don't pass the the offering plate, uh, we do take a collection at the end of our service uh, that you can that you can leave in the basket, or if you'd like to give online, we have several options through Zelle, PayPal, and uh, Giveify that uh, you can find on the screen to contribute uh, gifts and offerings to our church and to our community. Um, uh, uh, we are still looking for a convener, someone um, who will be the chairperson for, for our church council as we go uh, as we go through the year. Uh, and that will be maybe six times this year, beginning uh, January 21st, I think I put that. And, uh, Looking, looking at the overall administration and how, how the nuts and bolts of how the church works together. Someone to help oversee that. If that's you, give me a call. And I just want to highlight on, on the 21st when I said we're having church council. So we'll have church council, we'll have uh, uh, our table of ministries meeting together, our class leaders meeting together. I'm inviting, I'm hoping everyone will come out. Um, on January 21st from 10 to 1. We'll have a brief meeting in the morning, but we're going to be mainly looking at our calendar for the year and our vision and, and, and how are we living out our mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. How do we best do that as we move into 2023? So I invite you to come and join us. Let's shift focuses a bit as we continue on with our worship. Let us read responsibly from Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord. The glory of you his name. Worship the Lord and strike of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is not The voice of the Lord is just. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in, uh, the Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes like a cat, Syria, 
like a young wild fox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the heavens. The Lord shakes the heavens and the vanish. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare, and in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits in the realm of the Lord. The Lord is known as King of the The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. May you, may all of us, experience the voice of the Lord this morning. Invite us to join together as we sing, I have decided to follow Jesus. Roy, I'm not, this is uh, this is my notes. Um, I'm not sure if we had a video of a piano for this. Did we have a video? Uh, okay, awesome. Thanks. My fault. Oh, 
Do you remember when you first took the plunge? When you first decided to follow? Some of us, those, those memories are right at the forefront of our mind. For others, we've, we've been following Jesus. For as longer than we can remember, it's a, it's a pattern of our life, or even sometimes those decisions be part of the church were made as for us as a child in our family and raising us up. But you know how it is this first year if you turn on if you turn on the news right at the beginning of the year you turn on ABC Channel 7 and what are they doing on that first year at Pretty's out in Lake Michigan? All those crazies out in Lake Michigan on New Year's doing what? Taking the plunge right into those freezing waters. You ever seen those? You ever seen those interviews? Anybody ever known anyone that has participated in that? I don't, it's not going to be me. Um, <laughs> that, 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 that's the last thing I'm going to be doing on, on New Year's Day. Those waters are cold. But you got those people that are so, so adventurous. They love the thrill. And they just take that plunge. Even on what is the coldest time of the year, that refreshing water overflowing, changing things, starting the new year, wiping away the old. What would it mean for each of us to continue to take that plunge? And I wonder, I, I, wish, I, I wish I knew someone who's done this, uh, this jump in Lake Michigan on New Year's Eve thing. Because I can just imagine, I know that in school, when I had to go on the high dive, and, and you're stuck in, in PE class, and they make you do swimming, and you're just, uh, maybe not you, but me, <laughs> shaking right there as your feet are willing, ready to jump, you know, but thinking all those, all those things that what, what's going to happen after I jump? What's going to happen after I hit the wall? Yet those, those people on, on that New Year's Day, those wild, they're jumping the water, taking that plunge, just going for it. Today, and today, Jesus went for it. He went to the water, to be renewed, to be cleansed, to show us a different way. Would you stand together as we look at our scripture from Matthew? Verses, verses 13 through 17. Then Jesus came from Galilee to Joppa at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now. For it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and aligning with him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
taking the plunge into that holy water. That polar plunge is they call it. But think about even as Jesus comes to baptism in this sign, this sign of the Holy Spirit descending upon Jesus. The washing and the cleansing. Think of, think for a moment of water. Even this morning, the first thing, I don't know about you, but I do when I wake up and my throat is parched. I long to make the long, make the big trek from my bedroom down my stairs to the kitchen to grab me a big old glass of ice water. And that's the first thing, right, that, that gets me going in the morning, even before that coffee. Um, it's that, that ice water, that refreshingness that takes from my, my dry, cracking throat to give me a newness. Water as, as we shower in the morning. The most basics of water, water growing plants. Even water in, in our cars as we get to those things. The early philosophers in ancient Greece would, would try to bring down what are what are the most basic elements of life? What are the most what is the world made up of? Where do we find truth? And, and as they were figuring this out over those early centuries, these patterns kept coming across water, air, soil, the most basic of nutrients, the most basic elements in, in our earth. It's within water that we find God. And God first created, right in that seven day creation. In Genesis, we see splitting the waters and the earth. God gave a covenant to, to God's people through Noah, right? When the, when the rains came, and the whole earth needed a reset button. The water came and the rains came and the earth was transformed. And God had that covenant, that rainbow, that dove sending upon Noah and his future ancestors. That same water is the water where, where Moses as a baby floated down that river and was entrusted with Miriam. It was that same water that, that Jesus talks about in growing and nurturing plants. That water that, that provides the nutrients of what we need. It was the water of the womb that held Jesus for nine months. That carried Jesus into new life. And now Jesus comes once again to John, his cousin the water. And he says, John, I, I need to be baptized. And in Matthew's gospel, there's, at the beginning, there's this little conversation, if you noticed it, that John doesn't really want to baptize Jesus. That John is baptizing these others. Jesus sees, sees John being baptized, or baptizing others. And Jesus comes to John and says, I need to be baptized. 
Bible. Now, in the Old Testament times and in, in Jewish history, similar, similar to our ritual of, of a baptism, that, that, that was a water purification. It was part of it was part of the Jewish ritual. These ritual cleansings of being made new. Repenting of your sin and turning back and being plunged just under the water again to be cleansed in a new life. That was the meaning of that baptismal ritual then. And so Jesus comes to John to say, I need to be baptized. <clears throat> and yet John, John, direct response was to Jesus, but I, I can't baptize you. I, you're the one that should be baptizing me. That I'm not righteous enough. And yet, yet Jesus perseveres and goes under that water. John consented and, and Jesus is baptized. And as something happens in that moment with water, something happens as, as Jesus emerges from the water that he's the heavens open. God speaks. This voice of God comes to Jesus like a dog. Like a dog. And this voice of the dog is heard. This is my son. My child. The beloved with him I am well pleased. With him I am well pleased. See, baptism is, is more than, than just this ritual that we have in the church. It's a, it's a sacrament. This thing that we can't do our, on our own, but somehow in the midst of it, the ministry of God comes. And in this the account the mystery of God comes as a dog speaks. And in baptism, as, as Jesus calls us to go out and baptize in his name and to continue this sacrament in practice, baptism becomes this mark. This mark of our identity as followers. Almost like the mark of God on us, kind of like a unique fingerprint that we all have. Just as our fingerprints identify who we are, baptism identifies who we are in Christ. It's, it's being part of the family of God. He made one. And in this identity with Christ as followers of Jesus, when, when we remember our baptism, when we remember that grace that was bestowed upon us, that love, that love that was given to us through those waters, we remember that our identity does not lie in other stuff. Our identity doesn't lie in how much money we got or how well people treat us. Our identity doesn't lie in the kind of clothes we wear, the car we drive, or the house we have. Our identity does not lie in the status of our jobs or of our gender or of our race. Our identity doesn't lie in our education or whether we think we're good one day and we think we're bad 
another day. Our identity doesn't lie in what I think of you or what you think of me. And that's good news. We are so much more. And through baptism, through being incorporated into this body of Christ, we are God's children. This is my son, the beloved, is whom I am well welcome please. And in our baptismal vows that we take, they first say we're initiated. When we go into the water, we get that mark of Jesus, initiated into the body of Christ. And then we're incorporated. Another word that's you incorporated into this body. And when you think incorporation, think like a recipe. If you're, if you're cooking a recipe, and you can have all these ingredients individual by, by themselves, but there's something that happens when that recipe and in each ingredient just comes And your butter and your sugar all together. And even if you start mixing it up, it's still a bunch of dry ingredients. But you start incorporating that water, incorporating that milk, those things that nurture, that that recipe, as, as we're cooking, becomes something totally different. It becomes transformed. And so, in baptism, it's just not about you and me. But it's part of God's covenant for each of us, with us, that we are God's children. And we will never be left alone. We're identified by this body of Christ. Every time a sermon comes up on baptism, they get lots of questions. Because lots of churches practice baptism in different ways. And for some of us, as an older teen or, or an adult, that You've had a salvation moment that you recognize that you want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. So I'm ready to be baptized. This is an this is an outward sign of of an inward transformation that's happening in my life. For other of, of, of us and many of us within. That, that baptism has been part of the church and baptizing children throughout the Orthodox Church and the Catholic Church as, as the church grew throughout the world. And then, and, and in, in that idea that when we baptize babies, it's this idea, again, of incorporation, that, that God's grace is so big God's grace is so good and so loving that, that when we baptize a child, the parents and the family and the church said, we're going to raise you up this way. We're going to raise you up as a child of God, as a follower of Christ. And then you've heard the word confirmation. Right, either in the in the Methodist Church or the Orthodox or Catholic or Presbyterian or Lutheran. And the word confirmation, that these confirmation classes we take to become a church member, that's confirming your baptism. This idea of I'm I'm taking it on for myself. 
I'm taking on this, this way of life that, that I've been brought up in through generations, and I'm claiming it as my own. And then there's, there's other arguments where they're, instead of baptizing a child or an adult, do we, do we sprinkle or do we dunk? Or how many times do we dunk? Or how many times do we keep someone under? How long do you keep them under? And, and do I sprinkle them once in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Or do you sprinkle three times in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Same with dunking. And, and people will get in these arguments and, about baptism for no reason. I, I don't know why. And, but let me tell you, no matter what way you've been baptized, whether it was at a ch as a child, whether you were baptized as a teenager or an adult, whether you received one baptism and then the United Methodist Church was in, in one baptism and then we can renew that baptism. That's actually what we're Whatever your What baptism is about, and for most of us, I was baptized as an infant and don't remember that, and my, my family and my church family uh, took that on for me. And it, it's really interesting, I, I was a teenager, and um, a lot of my friends uh, got baptized older, my friends from other, other churches. And, and I, I, I felt that I, at that point in life, that I kind of got jipped. That I should, I should be able to get baptized if, uh, as, a, as a teenager. And the pastor who, who is leading, yeah, he responded to my inquiry that, that man, I, I just, I'm a teenager now. I wanted to, I didn't want anybody else making these decisions. I want to make this decision. Christian need to understand grace. We need to understand grace. That baptism isn't something that we do. And even though it's a choice that I might make, baptism isn't something that you and I make. It's so much bigger than you or me. And, it, and, and he went on to talk about that, that the church, the church is the one who promised to raise me up. Those people in the pews who were my blood relatives and not my blood relatives, those people in the pews who had good days and bad days, those people in the pews who sometimes walked out, and those people in the pews who were always faithful. And he said that when you can't make that decision for yourself, the church holds you up. The Holy Spirit holds you up. And grows you and nurtures you in that way. And that changed my whole perspective on baptism. It didn't become, it, it went from being the selfish thing that I thought I wanted and needed to recognizing that that God that love, that Holy Spirit had been with me all the while. Had been going with me since those waters of baptism in my infancy. So this morning, whether you were baptized as a kid, baptized as an adult, dunked, sprinkled, polar plunged in Lake Michigan, however you want to do we come to remember as Jesus humbled himself and went to John, we come to remember who we are and whose we are. That our identity isn't in a whole bunch of stuff. 
That we don't got to be the coolest kid in school. That we ain't got to be a basketball player. We ain't got to be a gamer. You can just be you. God accepts and loves you just as you are. And our identity, that Jesus loves us, and that we can love Jesus, is so much more important than anything else. So my friend, morning, come. Come and be washed clean. Come to the water. Come and experience the presence of Christ. And as you come, I want you to take a moment and there's some mirrors. Sometimes we don't like to look ourselves in the mirror. I want you to take a good look, whether you like it or not. Just remind you, your identity, you are a beloved child of God. You are loved. And as we remember our baptism, maybe, maybe you just want to touch Water. And to the side of the cross on your forehead to remind you. You can come up to the altar and pray if you'd like. There's some shallows up here and some glass marbles that you might just take it with you, throw in your pocket throughout the week, or put it somewhere in your house so you can remember on those good days and on those rough days. Remember those waters that cleanse, those waters that nourish, the water of the Holy Spirit that transforms our lives. Once you kind of look at this together, we don't need to stand, but these words or something similar occurred at your baptism. Whether you were a child or an adult, let's hear it and join together. Sisters and brothers in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, God's Spirit has been poured out upon all of us. Water poured over and immersing us. Water that flows freely for all who will receive. Water from the streams of God's saving power and justice. Water that brings hope to all who thirst for righteousness. Water that refreshes life, nurtures growth, and offers new birth. Today, we come to the waters to renew our commitments in each other's presence to Christ, who has raised us, the Spirit who has birthed us, and the Creator who has marked all things in and so I ask you, will you turn away from the powers of sin and death? We renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil of the powers of this earth, and repent of our eyes. Will you let the Spirit use you as prophets to the powers that be? We accept the freedom and power that God gives us. To resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever form is being presented. Will you proclaim the good news and live as disciples of Jesus Christ, his body on earth? We confess Jesus Christ as our Savior, put our whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as our communion with the church which Christ has opened to all people of nations and races. Will you be living witnesses to the gospel, individually and together, wherever you are, and in all that you do? We will remain faithful members of Christ's global church 
and serve as Christ's representative. Will you receive and profess the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testament? Will we affirm and teach the faith of the whole church as we put our trust in God, the Father of God, in Jesus Christ, his Holy Son, and in the Holy Spirit, one God now. The Spirit of the Lord is with us. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty God, the life you burst in us by baptism in Jesus Christ will never die. Your justice never fails, your mercy is everlasting. Your healing river flows, your spirit flows where you will. We cannot stop But sometimes we try. We try to block the flow, we redirect the winds of the spirit, or we walk so far away from the life-giving stream that we do not hear its sound, and we forget its power. We parch ourselves. We are dry and thirsty around. Oh, flesh. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon us, Holy Spirit. Come upon these waters. Come upon these waters. Let these waters be to us drops of your mercy. Let these waters be to us righteousness and repentance. Let these waters renew in us the resurrection power of Jesus. Let these waters make us long for your coming. Most holy God, Abba, Father, Lord, Lord to you. Spirit of fire, spirit of the waters, spirit of hope, Lord to you. Eternal God, one in three, three in one. All glory is yours now and forever. If you have been baptized, and if I invite you to come, you can come at your leisure using the side aisles. Come on up. Take a look at me. Enjoy the water. The water is fire. Come. Enjoy the water. And if, if we're in a place where, where you're interested in talking about that, and if you haven't been baptized yet, and would like to make that choice, come talk to me after worship.
and live out Jesus' love as we go from this place to share that love with the whole world, sharing the good news with others of the love of Jesus today and every day. Amen. As we close this morning, Let's, let's pray together. We want to make sure that we're lifting up in prayer those who are those who are listed on our screen. We lift up the prayers of those of you joining us online. And especially this, this weekend with the, the Matt Rock family as they're, as they're traveling in the death of a loved one as they grieve and for safe travels to their families. Let's take a moment and pray. Oh God, as the water is a sign of your covenant with us, that we are your children, may we live today as cleansed people, as washed people. Continue to wash over our lives. Pour out your spirit on us. Wash away all that is less than pure. Refine us, O oh God. So as we go, be your people, that we can share in your love and your joy. God, we lift up to you those this morning who need your special care. These prayer requests. Those that need your special care today. That show us your blessing. For our community, may, may our community be a place of peace. Where everyone is fed, where everyone is loved, where children and learn and grow for our for our nation and our world we pray for our people that you would give them wisdom and humility that you would speak your voice and remind them of their Lord, heal our land. To the camp and the artist family. Continue to show them your 
mercy and your grace. Show us how to support you and the mothers. It's in the name of your Son, Jesus, that we lift all these things to you. We give ourselves as he gave himself to us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So my friends, go today and every day. Take the waters of baptism with you. May you be refreshed and renewed. Go in peace and go with God. Would you stand and join us in our closing song? Shout out. Oh, my God. 